All the new cars for 1957 were on show for the first time at Monaco. Fangio got the season off to a great start, winning the Argentine Grand Prix for the fourth time. He was now back with Maserati, having left Ferrari. A new team, Cooper, was making its debut. Van Wall, Ferrari and Maserati were the main contenders. Roy Salvadori had signed for BRM, but early in 1957 he'd suggested to Rob Walker that the one and a half litre Coventry Climax engine in the back of the Formula 2 Cooper could be increased to two litres and this would be the ideal car for Monaco. Jack Brabham was the driver chosen to give the car its debut. However, Brabham's race was in doubt after an accident in practice, but the parts were rebuilt into Les Leston's Formula 2 chassis and so the Cooper was able to start the race. Mike Hawthorne was trying out a new version of the Lassia based Ferrari. Sterling Moss also tried out a Ferrari. He didn't get the chance to drive one in Grand Prix racing. Perhaps he would have won the World Championship if he had done so. At Monaco, all the Maserati drivers tested the new V12 engined 250F. Fangio achieved the best results, but only by banging in the clutch at 6,000 RPM to make the car accelerate and powering the car around the tight corners. He and teammates Carlos Mendetenguy and Harry Schell elected to use the straight six version after practice. Jean Bayreau was replaced by Giorgio Scarlatti for this race. Sterling Moss and Tony Brooks were driving for Van Wall with the short nose version to save bodywork damage on the usually fraught opening laps. Peter Collins and Mike Hawthorne were driving for Ferrari, so the top six drivers in the world were in the top six cars. Sterling Moss led away in the Van Wall from Hawthorne and Collins in Ferraris and Tony Brooks in the second Van Wall. The critical moment came when Moss missed his breaking point on lap four at the chicane. Wooden poles came across the track, which Peter Collins ran into. Fangio avoided the trouble, but Mike Hawthorne tapped Brooks and ended up on top of Collins's car, so the three British stars were out of the race. As Moss, Hawthorne and Collins walked back to the pits, Fangio took over the lead. Behind him, at a comfortable distance, was the van wall of Tony Brooks. The Cooper, in Jack Brabham's hands, amazed everyone, and he was soon up to third place. Brooks was tiring at the end, leaving the way open for an easy Fangio win. Disappointingly for Brabham, in the final laps there was a fuel pump problem with the little car from Surbiton. The hopes of John Cooper appeared to be over as Jack's car came to a halt on the far side of the circuit, but a determined Jack had to push the car over the finish line in sixth place. Points were only awarded down to fifth place at the time. Juan Manuel Fangio celebrates another win in what was to be his final and very successful season in Grand Prix Racing.